Hello everyone and welcome to the video blog with the Rafael del Pino Foundation. Uh, today we're going to talk about bond yields, why sovereign bond yields rise in an environment of massive central bank intervention. Um, central banks implement quantitative easing with basically one idea, which is to uh, focus their policy on increasing inflation and also to generate what is called financial repression, which is to uh, take out of the market the most uh, safe asset, the safest asset, sovereign bonds, in order for savers to take more risk, invest in the economy and generate what is the transmission mechanism of monetary policy, which is basically that the central bank acquires the safest and most secure asset uh, and therefore banks have uh, higher tolerance for risks, they take more, uh, they, they give more credit uh, and investors invest in the more cyclical side of the economy and basically investment and credit uh, run more smoothly, they increase a little bit more. Uh, that idea is predicated on the fact that the sovereign bond is mispriced, that there is, uh, that the bond yields uh, in that uh, sovereign issuers have are incorrect and therefore the central bank acquires those bonds, makes a profit because it understands the risk better and at the same time the credit mechanism improves because banks are not uh, suffering from having a bloated balance sheet full of uh, sovereign bonds and it, they can start to lend to the real economy. Um, that idea is good until uh, central banks do what they have been doing throughout these years, which is that instead of purchasing a mispriced asset, sovereign bonds, they have been making sovereign bonds massively expensive. That's why what we have seen is that some of those bonds that the central bank was buying uh, started having negative real and nominal yields. Therefore, the price of those bonds goes from being heavily mispriced in terms of being uh, massively cheap or very attractive in a crisis to being monstrously expensive in an environment of recovery, even in an environment of growth, as we saw between 2016 and 2019. Um, when the mispricing of sovereign bonds is so severe that they provide negative nominal uh, and in sometimes real yields, what happens is that financial repression reaches an extreme in which uh, buyers of sovereign bonds will only do it because they expect the price, because the yield is very low, they expect the price to appreciate very aggressively because of the massive repurchases of central banks. Now, see what happens. When the sovereign bond is not reflecting inflation expectations and its price is so expensive that it is massively uh, not considering the real risk included in the uh, solvency ratios and the liquidity ratios of the sovereign issuer, what happens is that the difference between uh, inflation expectations and the yield of the sovereign bond are so out of proportion that even a very small increase in inflation expectations leads investors to sell and to uh, get out of the sovereign bond market. Why? Because they will get massive losses if inflation continues to be above the nominal and real yield of uh, sovereign bonds. So this is what's interesting, is that central banks are trying to create inflation and at the same time their policy doesn't work if they do. 
particularly if their policy doesn't work if they create inflation and continue with the expansionary policies, which inevitably will lead investors to get out of the two uh, extreme parts of the valuation part of the economy, the sovereign bonds, which are the most expensive, and the more cyclical assets that depend on the growth of the economy. So repression of bond yields actually can create a financial crisis quicker simply by a very modest change in inflation expectations. And that change in inflation expectations is not going to be uh, reversed with messages of more dovish policies. Because when central banks come and say, don't worry, we will continue to inject liquidity into the economy and keep rates low, the difference between the reality perceived by investors and citizens leads to two things. First, citizens don't take more credit. Uh, investment uh, banks and uh, companies, etc., they don't take more risk or uh, originate more borrowing or more credit to the real economy. And at the same time, investors stop buying the fallacy of central banks will rescue uh, the, the elevated levels of valuations at any cost. And this comes from a very, very mild change in inflation expectations. And the reason why is because the bubble of everything, everything is so expensive and everything is so bloated in terms of valuations that it can crack with the smallest change of inflation expectations. So what central banks then will do, and they do, is to say first, that inflation expectation increases are not important because they're temporary. But it doesn't matter because the losses that can be created in two, three months of rising inflation uh, are so huge that it is not going to make people continue to run more risk at a lower yield. Financial repression always leads to too much risk and when too much risk is taken with the idea that central banks are going to save us from any of our wrong investment decisions, then a crack in the system can come from a very, very limited change in inflation expectations in this case. Thank you very much.